first one we're at is a Worcester Serve AI and we've got intermittent hot water. So, quick test before we take the cover off. This is lit. Right, I reckon it's going to shut down in a minute because it's looking like a plate full. It's definitely not 80 degrees. Yeah, there must be a blockage in the plate, but we'll do a quick test. Move that from the back, sorry. On 30 guys, you've got two screws, one here. I'm on there, take them out completely. Then your front will lift off at the top. Look at that what it finished up at. I shut tap off ages ago as well. Undo that screw and then this front panel will drop down, giving us access to the plate. I think I'll take condensate trap out first though. Which you get on these, a screw behind that. As it says on here, this side will pull slightly, or twist slightly around and it should drop down. So what I'll do now is get my temperature clamps on the flow and the return to the plate. And just see what's the temperature difference between them two. Using the analyzer. So the top reading is our flow, bottom reading is our return. Fire it up. And we're not done. Let's see what happens with this. 20 degrees. Not too bad. The boiler has knocked itself off though because it's got too high. Get our cold means isolated to the boiler. This is the highest point in the house, so we'll be turning the heating valves off. Drain off. Get the pressure out of the boiler now. So that's emptied into that. I always put an arrow oh, before I take it out. That's a terrible arrow. Pointing upwards so I know which way it came out. Safe isolation as well, obviously. Open the tap to uh, relieve the pressure off the hot side. Look at that. We just breaches over the side. Wrong taps then. And you've got two posi screws, one's right back there, if it's gonna focus on that. There. And the other one is just tucked away underneath the hot water for Mr. back there. Prepared for water just to go everywhere because you can't really empty these properly. So I'll slacken these off a little bit first and then push on the screw to try and empty out any more water first. Got a towel at the ready. It's going to be sharp and hot, so I put gloves on at this point. And I'm hoping because the cold is so far off the wall, it'll drop down the back and out there. So it's removed now. Like I said, I'm going to try and drop it down after it's finished emptying. Again, through that gap. All right, so it won't quite come out with gas pipe there. I'm going to cut the cold out of the way down here. Got the cold out of the way. I've obviously shut it off downstairs. Disconnect it from there. Two hands, 
I think I'll get it. <sighs> Bats are out now. As you can see, I had bottom on it anyway, so I didn't really need the arrow. But I've got some new washes for it, so I need to flick the old ones out and put the new ones in with silicone grease. So this is what I use for cleaning out my plates. You can use brick acid. I've known people use buddy Coke. I mean Coca-Cola. <laughs> um, before, but you need to wear gloves on this. Best with rubber gloves, but latex gloves will have to be fine for me today. And you should really wear a mask because the fumes are toxic. I'll show you what I do with this. So it's quite clear which is the heat inside and which is the uh, cold water. See the colour difference? This isn't that bad, this plate though. It's normally you get black chunks falling out of it. In some areas of the UK, you sh people struggle with uh, scale in the um, potable water side. That's due to hard water, but where I am in the north, we don't, we don't have that issue. So you're gonna be pouring it in till you fill well, till it starts coming out the opposite side and when it stops bu bubbling it stops cleaning See it started to filter through there now Normally this would start fizzing up like a, a fizzy drink, but like I said, this plate isn't that bad. I'm just going to give that now 10 minutes to do its thing. Well, that was a bit more positive. Been about 10, 15 minutes just been for a brew. And yeah, it looks like it's uh, dumped out some crap so we'll get this flushed out with clean water now using the hose pipe you've got to thoroughly fl flush this out <laughs> till it well, at least looks crystal clear you have to excuse the audio on this one because we're right next to the main road you can see it all bubbling up at that end now we want that other end there to be coming out clear See that on the camera, but it's uh, nice and clear now. That beautiful. Get it put back in. Greased up now. I've got to get it back in in reverse order. It's gonna be fun. Can't remember which way reverse order was. <laughs> oh, what an absolute bitch! I'd isolate the gas and. Loosen this gas pipe off, so I'll have to test that after. Finally got it back in. <laughs> Give me a back seat any day. Right, that's a back in. Cold feed is now reconnected and water's back onto this valve here. If I can shake myself and use a spanner. Oh my God, I'll be able to turn it back on. That's our heating pressure up. Boilers back on. Gas LDF there. Do a localised tightness test in a second. Let's see what she does. As you can hear in the background, the boiler's modulated down, it's not knocked off like it was doing before. Just ramping back up again now. It seems to be a bit of a fault. 
So the main issue was they noticed it on the shower, keep knocking off. Now that could have been down to the cartridge in the shower itself, but I'm presuming it was a plate, so I'll just give that a quick test. I don't know what that little well, fella's doing there. The shower's been running now about five minutes. It seems to have stabilised on 73. That's boiler temperature, obviously not water temperature. Shower is set to 60 on that. Much better. It's worth pointing out that cleaning a plate heat exchanger is not a permanent fix. It does work, but the Grap inside it has come from the system somewhere. So I always recommend after doing it that the customer gets a power flush. Some people clean the plates, some people swap the plates out. It's customer's preference. They always give them the option we can try and clean it first. If it doesn't work, we replace it. They're not overly expensive. Granted, that one on a Worcester wasn't ideal, or as on a Baxi, you, you can just pull them out. Don't have to cut any pipe work out, nice and easy job. But yeah, it's not a permanent fix unless you get the system cleaned as well. Right, this episode's mm, shout out to another content creator on YouTube is Blue Bulldog Plumbing and Heating. Lots of you will know I work with Blue Bulldog on, um, I work with, I work. We do lives over on TikTok, probably get muted that bit, or restricted on YouTube. We do lives over on TikTok every Thursday night at nine o'clock with a guest who's in who's in the trade so if you have a fancy coming on again drop me a message on instagram or tiktok or my email is somewhere in my bio if you ever wanted to get on live and yeah i will put his picture of his channel here and link in the description if you haven't liked it give it a like anyone consider subscribing catch you on the next one